Hey everyone, Hi. welcome to this week's Connect Group Bible Study. Uh, this week, Miles preached on Revelation chapter 3, the letter Ooh. to the church in Philadelphia. And uh, in a moment, Kate's going to read it to us. But I thought just it'd be worth just looking at this last bit of it. It says, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And it's this sense that the Spirit is always speaking to uh, his church. And it kind of mirrors Jesus' line. He says, do you have ears to hear? Which it says, if you have ears to hear. And I always thought, what's that about? I was like, well, God, of course, that's all they do. Yeah. But it's like some ears are for hearing and for listening and other ears are for sort of just hearing, reaffirming what you already think. And so um, it's just a sense that as we're reading this now, just be expectant that God wants to speak to you and wants to speak to those in the group with you as you discuss this. We pray that you'd help us to hear, Lord. Amen. Amen. So as always, trying to have this open in front of you, uh, question mark, exclamation mark arrow for things you've got questions about stand out to you or can apply to your life and then Kate's going to read it so it's Revelation chapter 3 verses 7 to 13. Let's go to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these are the words of him who is holy and true who holds the key of David what he opens no one can shut and what he shuts no one can open I know your deeds see I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So just as Miles said uh, on uh, Sunday, the book of Revelation um, is um, a, a revelation of Jesus, uh, which it says in the opening few um, verses. And so um, sometimes people get a little bit head up about it, but it's all about Jesus. The word in the in the Greek, in the, it's just as a literal title, which is the Apocalypse of John, uh, meaning this revelation that John had, um, and really because apocalypse means revealing, and what is it? It's a revealing of Jesus. It's all about Jesus, in other words. I don't so, know about you, but the word apoc apocalypse mainly brings up sort of Hollywood weird movies of spaceships. Yeah, but yeah, I think that's possibly. But the original word means <laughs> the original just word revealing, means which revealing, is, which yeah. is helpful to. And so, um, and so, in you then get these seven letters written to the seven churches, and obviously, the the number seven in the Bible tends to represent perfection. Uh -huh. And so, yes, this is to the church in Philadelphia at the time, but it's also written to the to the universal and global church. So it's written to us and to to your connect group as you watch this today. Now, the church in Philadelphia, uh, Miles described it as like a little Athens. It had been founded to kind of share Greek culture, like an evangelistic mm. outpost for like for culture. for culture, for Greek culture, built in 190 BC next to a volcano. I mean, the Greeks were supposedly clever, so <laughs> not quite sure what they're doing there. The soil must have been good. The Isn't soil, the soil next to the volcano? Yeah, probably that. Know. Okay. Yeah, there's always a trade-off for good soil. Um, <laughs> but um, AD 17, the whole city is destroyed by an earthquake. And so the people in this city live in this, like, oh, we're building stuff and it all might get knocked down at any moment. Loss of life, loss Maybe of buildings. Maybe that's why they live there. Yeah, because <laughs> they could keep restarting. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, that kind of... On um, the edge. On the edge. No, I, one I, in the thrill. I think it was mostly awful. Um, <laughs> and so the, they're a city that just in the very bones is sort of a city that's on the edge and like, like you never know what's going to happen. And shifting ground, literally. And then you've got this church, which would have been very small. And then during this time, this letter is the Roman Empire, Emperor, uh, 
puts this decree that you must worship him. And so there's intense persecution the on the church. Things couldn't get hard any harder. It's pretty pretty hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so um and Miles just drew two things out of um this passage. One is that first of all we see about an opportunity and then we see an encouragement in our identity. And this is going to kind of go to the heart of care and challenge, which is one of those paradoxes of pastoral care, but also leadership as well, that you need both challenge and care. And we're going to see how they play together. So it says to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. He what he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no, no one, one can, can be open. open. I know your deeds. See, I've placed before you an open door that no one can shut. And all the way through this passage, there's these really powerful images. Like a, a door is quite a powerful image. Well, it 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 suddenly kind of you go, you don't really notice them. It's an everyday object. Yeah. Until it's shut in your face. Until it's shut in your face, but you can't open <laughs> you can't it open or you it. can't shut it. Kate's dad has a garage door that won't shut. The bane of his life. It's been expanding in the heat, and you can see here he's been like sanding it down, chipping it down. It's been t- it's been about three days work and it still won't <laughs> shut at the moment. Please don't rob us. Um and so um uh, it, these, it's a really powerful symbol when you start to think about it because it, it represents thresholds, it represents being held back and let in. Uh, and Jesus says, I'm giving you an opportunity. Now, in John's gospel, everything's kind of layers upon, uh, not John's, John's revelation. It's, it's, it's um, an onion. It's an onion. You've got to peel the, the onion. Books. And, uh, uh, and Mars just drew out three of the opportunities. One is to receive salvation if you're not a Christian. Now is the moment to become a Christian. Mm-hmm. Put your faith in Jesus. Trust in him. The door is open mm-hmm. uh, for you. The second one is to share the gospel. And again, um, you've all done an amazing job of inviting people. I think it's about uh, it's nearly 200 guests on this Terms Alpha. You've done an amazing job at inviting people. And this season is an unprecedented opportunity yeah. to invite people. People are questioning it's everything. openness yeah, at the minute. That they've built their lives upon and... Um, uh, and yeah, so well done for inviting people, but also a step of faith. This is this is a master just saying sense. This is a a time for people to step out in faith that God has opened a door for us. And I don't know what that is for you, um, but if you are doing it, get each other to pray for each other. And um, and and he says something really encouraging to them. He says, "Look, I know you have little strength." And I love that about Jesus mm-hmm. that he he knows us. In Isaiah, it says about him. A bruised reed he will not break. A smouldering wick he will not snuff out. He's kind. Yeah, he's kind. And I think um, sometimes the sort of things that capture our imagination a bit more, Jesus in the temple or Jesus sort of telling Peter to stop being so silly. uh, But there's also this kindness and gentleness. And he says to them, I know what little strength you have. And he commends them for these three things. Mm -hmm. You've kept my word. You've not denied my name. And later on, you've endured patiently. And they're just so wonderful, aren't they? That, you know, in the midst of all these struggles of the, the everyday life and then living a life of faith, mm-hmm. they, they've endured. And he says, look, I know you've got little strength. And like he's talked about this amazing opportunity and this amazing thing. But he says, look, I know where you're at and I know what you've got. And it's just this sense of like just knowing. And, mm-hmm. I, and I don't know where you're feeling at the moment. Maybe you're just feeling really tired uh, and worn out and just you know exhausted depleted is a word that's come up a lot it's like jesus says i know the little strength you I know. have yeah. and um i it's, see you it's just such an encouragement uh, i think this is an encouragement too and I, I will make those who are of the synagogue of satan who claim to be jews though they are not but lie. so i don't know if these people are saying they're jewish but not jewish or he's saying they're saying they're jews but actually, and they might be ethnically Jewish, but they don't they're follow. They're not living it. They're not living it. They're not actually. Um, Maybe. Uh, and that can, that's a repeated theme. But, it, but either way, they've been oppressing these guys. And he says that I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. And isn't that amazing? Just that that even those who are against you will come to see that God has blessed you and he loves you. Such an encouragement. And I, I can think like possibly the most intense time that I've lived with with close with other people who weren't Christians was in university for a few years. And I just remember a few times just people just saying, wow, God's really blessed you. And, you know, and, and they'd be really critical all this other time. But there are these moments where they could just see God at work 
blessing undeniable. me. Undeniable. And, and what's amazing, it's not about necessarily what you're doing. It's just they can see that God's doing something in your life. And they're like, well, that's worked out really mm-hmm. well for you. For and you're you. like, yes, it's Jesus. Jesus um, is Jesus. And uh, there are seasons in your life of persecution, but afterwards people will come to recognise the goodness of God. So it, it's, it, it's a massive encouragement. Um, why don't we go into our, our first um Three questions. questions. Question one. What is your reaction when you heard Jesus' words, I know your deeds? Second question. What do you think the three things Jesus commends them for look like in your life? So that's keeping of the word, not denying his name and enduring patiently. And question three. Who has been an example to you of patient endurance? Kate. Aww. me. <laughs> it's, it's Mother's Day as well. I have to be extra kind. English Mother's it's Day. It's true. Don't English freak Mother's. Out. Oh my goodness! It's English Mother's Day in the UK. Not Malaysian, Malaysian Mother's Day. Malaysian or American. Don't okay. worry. Yeah. Don't worry. I have to remember. You've not missed it. I have to remember two every year. <laughs> uh, enjoy. As before, you might have time for all of these questions or just some. Pick the ones that grab you. Enjoy it, and see you back in a bit. Okay. So this first bit is about opportunity and if you like this is about challenge but it's also then about care because he says I know what you've got Mm -hmm. but then he moves straight into encouragement and I think it's really interesting because you you need both you need challenge to have meaning uh, and uh, and purpose in your life as well as care Mm -hmm. so one of the ways we care for people is by challenging them so there's a really Mm -hmm. interesting dynamic and we see what Jesus does here he he recognizes what they've got even though he's painting this big picture, this big open door, but then he just encourages them. And I think this is a key one. When when you're tired, when you're feeling depleted, remember that Jesus says these things to you too. Mm -hmm. So first of all, he says, I'm coming soon. And that's an encouragement. There is an end. Mm. There is an end. It's easier to endure <laughs> something when you when know you how know long. It's gonna end. Like when you've got an app going, you are over half the way through your run. You're like, oh, I can do this. I can, okay. do this. I can do it. Now, we don't know how long this will last, but we do know that it won't last forever. Jesus is coming soon. Now, again, there's lots of jokes about he's he's on a way, on a way. Like he's been <laughs> saying he's coming soon for 2,000 years. He, mm. he views time differently. Uh, but but what we, we can take away from this is this will not carry for carry on forever. Uh, we will be justified because of what he's done and and righteousness and justice will come. Will and it's come what Nikki Gumbel says, that urgency is, a, is, a, is such a positive thing because the good news is only good news if it arrives on time. And I think that awareness of I'm coming soon really helps put, you know, a fire, a fire behind us to keep us going, mm. to keep us talking and praying passionately for our friends and those who don't know him. Yeah. So he gives us three, he encourages them in three ways. He says, mm-hmm. hold on to what you have so no one will take your crown. Uh, and it's this idea that um, that uh, as we invest our lives in God's kingdom, it's sort of like you're stacking up the the commendations, the, the, the not rewards that you earn your salvation, but as an overflow of what God is doing in your life, uh, you get acknowledged. I know it's full of pictures, Revelation, but I'm like, there's an actual crown. Do you reckon there's an actual crown? Who doesn't want a crown? I'd love to wear Mine a crown. would have flashing lights. Um, Mine and, would be covered in diamonds. Uh, <laughs> um, and it's just wonderful. It's nothing is wasted. I'm sure they were looking at their lives, they're looking at their city and they're like, are we making a difference? And it's like, yes, even if nobody else sees it, Jesus sees the love that you're giving, whether that's just to the people that you see at the moment or whether it's the people in the workplace, whatever you do, he sees it. And it, it, there's often things you don't even know you're doing because yeah. the spirit's at work in your life and it just feels natural. But he sees that all and it's all stored up in this picture of a reward and honouring with, with a crown. Uh, and so we're encouraged. We're encouraged. The next thing we see is we're used. He says, the one who is victorious I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. Uh, and there's a few images there. First of all, the mm. pillar in Philadelphia, when there was this massive earthquake that destroyed the whole city in 17 AD, the only thing remaining was the pillars. They stayed upright somehow of some of the temples. So everything else had gone, but you just have these pillars. And it's a powerful picture that even mm. when everything else falls, he says, I will help you to stand. So that's the first picture. That in the really hard times, you'll stand an encouragement. But also it says, you're going to stand in the temple of 
my God. Temples are places of worship and encounter with the divine. And in that culture, there'd have been, uh, as in ours, there were little temples everywhere to all kind of gods. And he's saying, you're going to be a temple of my God. In other words, you'll be a person, you will be a people who create and sustain places of encounter with God. You're going to create a place, you will be a sustainer, a place where other people can come in and they encounter Jesus. And because you're the pillar of the temple, it's that you're key. You're in the middle. Yeah. You're not going to miss out. I'm going to have you right there as part of this. And that's used in all sorts of ways. You know, if you're leading a small group on Alpha, mm. you are a pillar in the temple of God. You've created and you're hosting this little space mm. where people are tentatively exploring mm. a relationship with Jesus. Jesus. If you're uh, raising you. kids at the moment, you are discipling mm. them. You've made a family home that is a place to disciple mm. and grow your kids. How you care for your your friends how or, yeah jesus they uh, your kids encounter jesus around you the pillar in of worship in that place and you won't see all the fruit all at once no nope. fruit is always later greater and uh, later <laughs> and greater in the same but it's later <laughs> but he's saying look you will be used you will become a pillar in, in my god in the temple of my god and, and the last way he encourages them is he says you're honored I will write the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my name. Now, my new name, my new name. Receiving a name is, is a sign of honor. Uh, like we see this, you know, you well, I was just thinking the, the number of things named Tun Razak in the city. <laughs> like I, I started listing them as like five different things that come up quickly on Google. But like recently in India, they've renamed the biggest cricket stadium after the prime minister. And it's like, it's sort of, you, you do sort of an honoring by putting a name on mm. something. And the reverse is happening here. God is putting his name on you. He's saying, you're part of my team. You're part of my family. You I belong own you. to me. Um, but also that you reflect me, mm. that you're doing what I created you to do. You're an image of God. Like, um, you know, and names, company names, brand logos, your family name, uh, and and how that's used. These are all really, really things of honour. If the name is honourable, and God's name is is higher than all others. The other thing that's really interesting here is you've got this idea of the New Jerusalem, which is coming down out of uh, heaven from my God. So uh, this idea that we don't go up to <coughs> heaven, but heaven comes down on earth as it is in heaven. So we pray your kingdom come. And what is uh, the city of God? It's a city where God's will is done. Uh, it, your kingdom come, your will be done. God's will is done freely and joyfully. We're not forced to do it, but we choose to do it and we do it with great joy. We don't escape out. His kingdom comes down and he says, that's what you're going to be. That's ultimately what's going to happen all over the earth. But that's, you know, I always think on earth as in heaven, this bit of earth. I'm, we're, we're made of dust. Where do we want his kingdom to come? Here it's first, me. start here. Uh, and we're told we're, we're given Jesus' name. And, and in Corinthians, it says this, and you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of human hearts. Uh, and that's just a lovely image of how the Holy Spirit does that. And, uh, and all of this is to say it's we need to be listening to this. Uh, and one of the ways we listen is by reading it and then accepting it. But we can also help each other. Mm, it's uh, a beautiful picture of what we can do for yeah. each other as well as God does to us. So we want to help each other hear God's spirit. And so the last two questions, the first one's a question, but then the second one is a practical exercise that it's we want, be fun. want you to go You're and do. Love it. Uh, and so, uh, and this is the last bit. So Kate's going to read these and then we're going to pray and gonna send you off to do this activity. Okay. So question four, first of all, which of these areas do you need to receive his words in the most <laughs> at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the, the idea behind the that was you've got these amazing pictures. There's a door of opportunity. Mm -hmm. There is a, a crown uh, of the, of acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. There is a pillar in God's temple. And there's a name badge. Names are a little bit more ethereal. But which one of those images, uh, which one of those areas do you most need encouragement uh, in at? Need to make the most of in, the moment, really yeah. claim for yourself. And que question five, I think you should unpack this a little okay. bit. Because this exercise so, is going to be really fun. So having fun. gone around and said that, I'd love you to go around the group and encourage one another. Your turn. What are you grateful for about the others in the group? And you might want to use Jesus' list in the last part of the passage as a guide. Yeah, so I you, think you should. I think it'd be fun. And, and what's what, the way you can do it is you can just go, Kate, I am really grateful uh, for your joy and your happiness that you bring. Uh, and you could just say it like that. Or you could go, you could just be thinking, 
could be something else or you can use this as a guide so the crown what things have you seen them do and yeah, you just want to go out. i see you do this you always turn up and you you're always the first to pray or something yeah. like that then a pillar how have they helped you know god better so maybe you want to what say you seen in them you help me because you always ask really fascinating questions mm-hmm. and they get me thinking yeah or name what do you see of jesus character reflected in their life so like you're just so kind or, or something like that. But um, uh, and go around, and uh, you want each person to have a go at encouraging every other person. So you need an order and systematic. Mm-hmm. And basically, this is a form of prophecy. Encouragement is the simplest form of prophecy. Mm-hmm. And what we're trying to do here is help each other hear what the Spirit is saying uh, to His church. And so, Kate, why don't you pray for us, and uh, and then head off and have a go at this. Lord Jesus, I thank you for all the ways in which we get to see you in other people. And I ask now, as we go around and encourage each other and call stuff out and point things out, the ways in which we see you in in their lives, I ask that you would give us the words to say it in a way that um, we can receive it and really be encouraged by it. And I ask that you would point things out that maybe people don't know or just need to hear today. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd be so on the move as people action this this sort of journey that you've done for us, the things that you do over us as we reflect that and do that for those around us and the people that we love around us in these connect groups. We ask that you would move in power and encourage and, and build up. And Lord, would the fruit from this be just a beautiful thing to behold. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great time uh, experimenting with this and see you on Sunday. Bye.